Hi there and welcome to another Excel tutorial. I'm Steve and in this video we're going to talk about how to calculate compound interest in Excel. And specifically we're going to learn how to use the future value function in Excel. So let's jump into an example and I'll show you how that works. So I've got a few things here in this little spreadsheet. and Let me kind of break down what's happening for you here. First of all, let's take a look at this formula right here. This is the future value formula, and it can be used to calculate compound interest. And we'll get into the details here in a minute, but you can see we have the arguments for the formula down here. And what I've done is put all those arguments up here so they're a little easier to look at. So the first one is the rate, and rate is your interest rate. So if you have a savings account and you're making 2% interest on your investment, then you would put that amount here. If you're making 10%, congratulations, put 10% here. The NPER is the number of compounding periods. So if your interest is compounded or paid back to you once a year, and you want to know how much interest you'll make after one year, then you put one. If your interest is compounded once a year and you want to know how much interest you'll have after 10 years, put 10. Okay, so that's what the NPER is. The PMT is your payment, your additional payments. And this is inputted as a negative number. And I wish I could explain why that is. I don't actually really know. But if you were going to do a $10 payment each year, then you would put $10 in there. And the brackets here show this as a negative number. Your PV or principal investment is how much you start with. So if you open your savings account with $1,000, that would be your principal investment. And then finally, the type is when any additional payments will occur. And that's referring to this additional payment. And it's basically saying, is this payment going to occur at the beginning of the year or compounding period or at the end of the year or compounding period? And we'll just stick to years for simplicity, but you can go with months or six months or quarterly, and that gets a little more complicated you basically only have two options. You have zero and one. So if you put a zero, that means you're making this additional payment at the beginning of the year. And if you put a one here, that means you're making this additional payment at the end of the year. And we'll play with that just so you can see what's happening. So if you go down here to our formula, you can see that I just basically put in cell references for these different arguments. So our rate is referring to cell A3, which is where our interest rate is, and that is formulated as a percentage, by the way. Our NPER is referencing B3. Our payment is rep referencing C3. Our principal value is referencing D3, and our type is referencing E3. You could just type this in as a number too, zero or one, but the whole point is that if we have a formula that's referencing all these cells, then we can change anything in this little spreadsheet and it will tell us our answer. Okay, so let me hit enter to put that formula back in here and I'll explain what's happening here. So this is basically saying we invested a thousand dollars after one year it gained 2% interest. And so 2% of $1,000 is $20, which would actually make this $1,020, right? However, we also added an additional $10 at the end of that year. So our total is now $1,030. And I apologize, I actually said this backwards. A zero here means you get your payment at the end of the period which is why you don't see any additional interest. If you put a one here, then that means you put your additional payment at the beginning of the period. 
and you would see it a little increase because you'll also get 2% of $10. So for example, let's go in and change this. Let's go one, hit enter, and see we gained an additional 20 cents of interest, which is 2% of $10, which we invested at the beginning of the year. So let's just go back for simplicity's sake, change this back to zero, and we can play with some of these other numbers here. Now it's not likely that you would earn more than 2% on your investment if you're invested in a traditional savings account or an online savings account, but you certainly could play with this. Let's say you could find 3%, just change that to three, hit enter, and it's gonna show you what you made for the year. So remember, this is $1,000 times 3%, which is $30, plus your additional payment of $10 at the end of the year. But where the compound interest calculation gets really cool is when you start to change the number of compounding periods. So instead of one year, let's say we're looking at 10 years. So you just enter 10, hit enter, and now the number has jumped quite a bit. And that's where the magic of compound interest comes in because as your principal investment grows, you then earn interest on your principal plus the additional amount that you made the year before or the compounding period before. So it grows faster or compounds. And one interesting side note, as someone who enjoys the stock market, a lot of people talk about compound interest in relation to the stock market. And there's a lot of arguing back and forth about what that really means. Because a lot of people say, well, yeah, you're making compound interest in the stock market because your money compounds. And technically that's incorrect, and so a lot of people kind of rail against that. But from sort of just an abstract sense, if you want to know about how much your stocks will go up, you can still kind of use a compound interest calculator. What you're basically doing is, is calculating compound growth, not compound interest. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Let me get rid of this additional payment. We'll just go to zero. And so we in originally invest $1,000. And let's say we're looking at a 10-year period again. And you know the standard and poor 500, S&P 500, on average, let's say it goes up 7%. I've heard 7 to 9% as common averages, but We'll play it conservative and we'll say it goes up 7%. So you can do a rough calculation and this, again, this isn't 100% accurate, but if you take an average and you assume that it's going up 7% each year, then you can take your $1,000 and you realize at the end of the first year, it's going to be $1,070 because it added 7%. And then your $1,070 is going to go up by 7% and so on and so forth. And so it does actually compound the value of your stock. And to show you a contrast, if I went down here and we took $1,000, we'll just make a formula. We'll say equals, we'll say $1,000 times 7%. That gives us 70, and then if we take 70, we'll put this in brackets because that has to happen first. And we do 70 times 10 years, which is how many times it would happen, and hit enter. You'll notice that if you just got 7% interest on your $1,000 every year for 10 years, you would gain $700. But with the power of compounding, because you're also getting 7% on the, um, the small amounts that you've earned, the $70 that you earned the first year and so on, you get this interest or the increase in the case of stocks, you get your 7% increase every year on the additional amounts, then it actually winds up being more. And this is fairly insignificant over short periods of time, but over long periods of time, the difference in your end result will be significant. And just to show you one other thing, let's go into this formula here. If we wanted to have an additional payment every month, 
we could tweak our formula a little bit to make that possible. And right now we're going under the assumption that this is yearly. So if I do this as, again, $10, oops, not $100, $10, I have to make it negative. So the formula works right. So your additional $10 payment once a year, you'll get a higher result, obviously. But if we go into our formula here, and we go to C3, and we multiply that by 12, right? So that this is actually happening every month for a year, and we hit Enter, then you see we're gonna get quite a different calculation. It's obviously going to add up more, because you're adding $10 a month times 12 months, you're adding $120 a year to your principal investment, and it's also gaining your increase in interest. Or again, in the case of stocks, your growth of the stock. So that's just a little kind of hack. And say you wanted to add, you know, two payments a year, then you'd take that and change it to two. So you're doing a $10 payment every six months. And you can figure out what that is. But the fun of this is you, if you want to know, you know, how much is it going to be worth in, you know, 50 years. And that'll be way past my retirement age. I'll probably be dead by then. But you can still calculate it and hit enter. And then that's going to show you how much that will compound when you're old and gray. So those are some basics on using future value to calculate compound interest and to sort of estimate compound growth of a stock. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and learned something, please click like. Feel free to subscribe. I'd love to see you in other videos. And if you want to learn more about Excel, check out my courses in the description. I'd love to teach you more. And I sure hope you put this concept into use by throwing some money into some savings accounts or investment accounts so that you can take advantage of compound interest and compound growth yourself.